And speaking about the group, you know, uh, I've had the great experience of painting with a lot of members of the group in the studio. And uh, so I'll start with, uh, with Daphne, who's my biggest influence. And in those early days in the 70s, uh, I had no studio. I could, she would lend me her studio. I could paint into the night in those cold Winnipeg nights. But uh, Daphne was one of those artists that's totally giving and supportive, uh, truly a visionary in terms of, of trying to bring forth uh, Native art to the front. Uh, her style has went from uh, realistic uh, drawing to uh, this more flat abstraction of uh, basically Native life. Uh, my favorite style was the one in the uh, mid-70s, around 75, 74, 75, which uh, was a transition of uh, very textured work with a lot of line work and much more. Uh, I can understand why I like it because this would probably I draw a lot of inspiration. It was filled with a lot of imagery, a lot of connection to spirit world and her colors were magnificent. That evolved into a more flat style, which is really great, and I think it's very popular. The, the 80s were very popular, uh, that work. But I'm still really hung up on the 70s because I guess that's when I was in the studio painting side by side with her. So I got to see that work develop from the blank canvas, which is always the most exciting part. Uh, Norval. Norville was such a powerhouse, uh, so direct, uh, there's truly nobody like him. His ability to communicate, besides his skill as an artist, to communicate ideas and, uh, and symbolic ideas, and in turn share uh, information, cultural information, is kind of unprecedented. He, uh, he was able to give us a lot and he was also so prolific. So there's thousands and thousands of works. And uh, when he talked, people would listen. He was very knowledgeable, a genius, if you say, if you will. Carl Ray, Carl Ray was the guy that I kind of was most maybe impressed by in those early days. He had such a view of his paintings were him inside the, the actual spiritual experience instead of looking from the outside. He, it gave you more of a sense of what the experience was and what he was seeing, not the uh, secret information or the kind of the things that you see in the woodland style that people really want. They want the legends, they want the stories, they want the connections to uh, what's been written. But uh, for Carl, his, his paintings gave you that feeling that you were, were inside the experience, inside the medicine bear. And unfortunately, he didn't live very long, so we never got to see the development of that work. Eddie, I got to uh, paint with Eddie uh, quite a bit. My, uh, actually, my style, uh, my technique comes a lot from Eddie. He was perhaps the most spiritual of the group. Uh, the one most connected to the traditional life. And he shared that in his paintings in a very subtle way that you really felt he knew what he was talking about. And it wasn't a facade. And it was so truthful. Jackson, I didn't, never got to really spend that much time with Jackson. But he had a, a different style, different take on the whole Woodlands experience. Uh, again, more toward uh, stories, legends, uh, talking about it in that way. Like I say, I was more, more influenced by Carl Ray. By I wanted the inside. I wanted to feel what it was like. And then uh, we come to uh, Alex, who is the, uh, in a way, the master of the group. Both him and Morriso would be uh, listed as masters of the craft to me, and Daphne as well. I uh, call them Los Tres Grandes. 
but Alex has taken his work to such a, a deep conversation with the public through murals, uh, Morning Star is something that uh, anybody that goes there has basically a spiritual experience. So he's allowed you into the vast uh, universe, the vast landscape of native spirituality. And of course, he's a master colorist. And the more you look at his work, the more you read. And uh, you're able to see his connection to the land, to the animals, to the water, uh, to Cold Lake. Uh, my favorite paintings are the ones he's doing right now. The, the best work of this freedom of brushstroke, this mastery of color and blending of color and communication of a landscape uh, that you have to kind of live with the piece and, and let it talk to you. And you certainly will learn what he's talking about.